What's going on, everybody? We're going to talk about <laughs> what enlightenment feels like. And I'll start off by saying there's no words to describe it. <laughs> Um, the best thing I can do is give you pointers, basically. And I will also say that enlightenment is the best feeling there possibly is. And this is why notably people strive for this. Even Christians, Muslims, all religions are all striving for this. It may be doctored up, covered up. There may be a veal, a veal such as <laughs> an actual one, <laughs> but more so metaphorically. And everyone's going for this feeling anyway. Hence why it is the best feeling the feeling though now because I will say this because I want to touch upon something sex is the best also most rewarding physical feeling there's a difference of when you feel something compared to as having a simulation of the senses. You feeling the wall. As in you're just feeling the wall. Whereas it almost becomes you, so to speak. Whereas it's not just a, it's not like a feeling, it's actually like a feeling inside. And um, when you tune into this, this is where intuition actually derives from. <clears throat> so again, this is why people are going after this especially uncon unconsciously because most certainly are <laughs> and it's the best feeling in the world because you're just being there <laughs> and when you're just there you're not having I always resort to this because I find it easy and makes sense to me because that's how you know you're there but once you're there you won't be thinking about it because you'll be feeling you'll be immersed in the feeling of existing of being alive there will be no thoughts and you'll just you cannot you could be aware of thoughts when they pass but for the most part, if you're really uh, uh, merged in it, then it's not going to happen. Because even when you become aware of your thought, you're like, who is becoming aware? Who is seeing this? Who is thinking this? And it's the energy inside of you. <laughs> um, I'm really good at explaining things. <laughs> That's hence one of the reasons I do it. But the thing is, a lot of gurus, especially that I've noticed, 
and just poor explaining of it, they don't like to say that you're God and there's the energy in you. They kind of like beat around the bush. But I'm giving you like the full submersion in it. <laughs> <clears throat> That's why going to certain areas that have enhanced energy for stillness and being around certain energy, or you could say vibes, of these people, especially someone who is enlightened. Um, I don't know how to say some of their names, but especially we can name the ones that I always list. Mu uh, Muji. Edgar Hartole and Saguru, and also probably other people too, obviously, Wim Hof, and there's that guy like Robert Spira, monks, the Buddhists. If they're truly enlightened, <laughs> you'll feel it when you're around them. <clears throat> so basically, they can transmit you enlightenment, <laughs> so to speak. And one of the best examples I can give you now, there was a guru or somebody that was enlightened and knew it. And it, when you know it, yes, you can speak about it, but it doesn't matter if you speak about it as much as you want to tote about it. You would have to damn near demonstrate it or you would just abide in it because you won't be thinking when you're abiding in it. So it's like a... It's like a paradox. It's like a loophole. Yeah, you can talk about it, but when you talk about it, yeah, you can still be in it. But um, you're also, you can get caught up into it for sure. <laughs> and that's what they call awakening, basically, because people, their thoughts replay. But as soon as you step out of the thoughts, then nothing's replaying. There's nothing to grasp onto. <clears throat> and then you'll be feeling, actually feeling, when people talk about feelings, they talk about describing certain actions of the body. Though when when I say when I say hate and when I say misery, it's just an energetic. Even the word that I'm saying, even the even the syllables down to the sustenance of the words, the consonants are just feelings, vibrations. The more you get in tune with your body, or, you know, yeah, attuned, aligned, then, uh, then you can feel more. <laughs> That's being unconscious, basically. <laughs> so, a lot of deep stuff right there. <laughs> um... So, like I said, you can go to these people and they can instill it in you. Rahamamashi, I don't know how to say their name. <laughs> they, he was a real good guy. And I could, I could just kind of tell. He would just imbibe in it. Or you go around any of these characters anyway. If you're really there and if they're really enlightened, they're just going to be in it and you can catch it. Back to the story I was saying. <laughs> there was a king who was searching for searching for an enlightenment. I don't know if he was necessarily suffering, but he probably was suffering. <laughs> and what he needed food or he wanted wives. And he couldn't figure out why he couldn't get it. And he went to this guru or he ran into this guru. And I don't think he believed in it. And he was on a horse. When this, people rode hoist, horses, 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 and there was the guru who was, in, in fact, enlightened. <laughs> the guy, the king that was searching for him was getting off his horse. He was lifting his leg up off the horse because you know how they like get down and ride on the horse, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and he, I never rode a horse, <laughs> but... He was getting up off the horse and the guru said, stop. When he said stop, he became indulged in it. Be not, it doesn't matter about the reasoning, 
But it, because he didn't know he was gonna, he was gonna say that. I don't know what they said before, <laughs> but he said, "Stop in midair." And when he stopped in midair, he fell into awareness. And then he became enlightened. <laughs> it's um it's simple as that. It's a great story. And that's basically what I want to explain. Again, it can't be explained, but it's always going to be the best feeling because you're feeling, you're not thinking. So it's going to be when people think, oh, this is fun, this is fun, this is fun. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very hard to explain. It's not necessarily fun, you're just describing it. You're, 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 you are enjoying it on a deeper level, but, but, but saying it's fun is not making it any more fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> because you're just there enjoying it. In fact, you can enjoy any situation and this is how you, and this is what the people, the gurus and Christianity and the religions are talking about. You can, if you're fully involved in the moment, you can just be, feel so alive. It feels so good to be alive and you'll like want to crack jokes. You'll want to laugh um, and you'll just be there. You know what I mean? Almost like a baby basically doing silly things. <clears throat> so, um, and it's already there for everybody. It's more so like coming, finding that place where you, you used to reach. I don't want to make this video too long, but again, it's, it is like the best feeling and that's why people go after it. And being there in the moment when you aren't thinking is the best feeling. <laughs> Again, people have thoughts that describe like certain things. So like, um, this is boring, but actually like describing it when they're there, basically. Um, it, it's, it's very, it can be difficult to explain because there is no explaining it, but people say like that house is ugly. It's only ugly because you think that it's actually nothing or something certain, certain about it. So whenever you think you're going to put some limitation on it and some, um, describing it in a certain way, when you recede from thinking and you're residing in pure soul, soulness, God-like energy, our true essence, and it's just so wonderful because you're just there. You're actually there. <laughs> Have a nice one. Subscribe to the channel.